Have you ever bought clothes online? Probably yes. For sure, today is pretty standard. A few decades ago, it was not. Natalie Massan, an American-born former fashion journalist, was one of the first people in the world to believe that buying clothes online can be a thing. She developed the concept of a magazine in a website format, where users could click on the clothes to buy them. Neta Portier was founded by her in London in 2000, becoming one of the leading fashion stores online. In 2015, Ux, the Italian company founded by Federico Marchetti, bought Neta Portier, merging in Ux Neta Portier. This story takes place before the merging. It deals with the evolution of project management within Neta Portier. This story has two main characters, Cam Chauvet, the head of service delivery, and Jonathan Aswan, whose team is responsible for part of the back-end system that makes the items purchasable on the marketplace. Back in the days, when Cam joined the company in 2006, the IT team had 20 people, with no business analysts, project managers or testers, they were just developers. In 2009, he joined a conference on Agile practices. He had already used Agile practices, and he met there an Agile coach who helped him bringing the Scrum framework in Etaporte. The project management office reacted with a specific resistance. How can we manage projects without a clear view on the final specifications? And why should the various business functions be on board since the beginning of the development? Still, Cam started experimenting, applying Scrum here and there, till mid-2010. All the IT teams switched to the Scrum ceremonies and role, working in two weekly iterations. A new standard for release was introduced as well, by the end of the year, with a three-week time slot. The year after, the company went through a major reorganization to fit the new way of working. They moved from teams based on the type of work, such as development or testing, to sports, based on the project of the work, front-end, back-end application development, and things like that. The squad had various roles in them to enable autonomous working. Squads become bigger and bigger as the company grew, making the need for coaching and mentorship more considerable. Jonathan joined his squad in January 2012. Jonathan was already used to Scrum practices and was happy to join a company already using it. Even though, right after, he realized that people were struggling with it. He couldn't know that this approach created a much better situation than what was happening before the introduction of the Scrum framework, with people working in iteration, helping people focus on smaller chunks of work and delivering them. Still, he realized that something was not going in the right direction. In the Scrum framework, story points should motivate the team towards efficiency, while referencing the expected effort on the various stories. Still, the teams were struggling with story points, opening various stories and often not closing them, which led to few points burned in each iteration, and with a lot of working in progress, generating a kind of frustration for failing in delivering the stories. To avoid this frustration, people often took shortcuts to deliver the story without caring enough about the quality of what they were delivering. In extreme summary, time was generating a huge pressure, making the ceremonies look like a waste of time, generating dissatisfaction to them and often letting them missing information of what was coming right after. Jonathan had an idea. Thinking back to something he heard back in the days, the Kanban. Kanban is the Chinese word to billboard. It's a scheduling system developed by an industrial engineer at Toyota to improve manufacturing efficiency, becoming one of the leading tools of lean manufacturing. One of its goals is to limit the build-up of excess inventory at any point of production, limiting the number of items in the various steps. Jonathan started considering Kanban a kind of scrum with added work-in-progress limits. He asked his colleagues to read about it. The team saw the potentiality and decided to experiment it. They broke some of the rigid rules of Scrum, opening to some flexibility that seemed relevant for them. They created a new Scrum board with 10 columns, one for each major activity in the workflow, adding the column in analysis, which was never introduced before, which they believed could help to let everyone know what was coming up. 
they decided to keep the story points as an alignment tool to ensure a joint understanding of the expected requirements. According to the Kanban approach, they added a work in progress limit to each column so that each person can focus on a single task, increasing attention to quality. People had to stop working on many items as they were doing before, feeling the pressure to deliver, since this would become clear to everybody and creating an issue with a work in progress limit. During the first stand-up meeting, they realized that there were activities that they forgot about with the previous approach, not caring about this alignment moment. They work hard to change their perspective on the stand-up meeting. In particular, they move the focus from the person to the activity, making it less personal and generating a more relaxed atmosphere. Their journey, obviously, was not over. After a while, they realized that they did not fix the limits in the best way and shuffled some of them. Still, the decision to revise their approach showed them the value of a critical approach to the way they were working in that precise moment. This video is built on the case study Kanban at Neta Porte regarding the control of the flow, published in 2014 by Link Kanban Inc. as part of the Kanban case study series by the Link Kanban University and available at the link below this video.